Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the second lecture of data structures. So today we are going to really go back and revise some of the data types which you are going to use extensively throughout the whole course. So C++ has a bunch of data types. Here I've mentioned four, which is character, integer, float, and double. And next to it, I've kind of like mentioned uh, what you would otherwise expect when you try this function size of. So size of is an interesting function because it tells you how much memory in terms of bytes is being used by each of these data types or the variables which are allocated to these data types. So as an example, um, let's run a simple program. So this is a function, um, a simple function in fact, and uh, what is interesting is I've actually colored with red reserved words which can only be used for the purpose that they are made for in C++. So you can see a lot of them are actually these data types like character, integer, float, and double. You can't actually use them as variable names. Return is an important uh, reserved word as well. So, so is include and using. So the whole point of these first two lines, in fact, is to include all the libraries that you actually want to include within your program. So this particular library called input output stream coupled with this using namespace standard actually allows you to use C out and then this thing called C in. C out actually allows you to whatever you're going to write here, it allows you to print it on to the monitor screen. Uh, and this size of in fact is the function that provides the size of the data type in your system. Whereas main is the function that actually executes whenever you run this, whenever you run a C++ program. And it is the main function which is responsible for calling out any other functions that you've defined within your program. The integer here that's mentioned is actually the return type. So that's why whenever you end a program uh, or end a function, there's usually this return statement. And the value that you put here has to have the same data type as the data type of the function. So returning zero, I mean, uh, that's just a value that you, I'm just putting here as an example, uh, is really put here because you have this integer as a return type. So considering this example, it's extremely useful to actually go to this shell, which is available online. So if you, uh, as an example, let's just look over here, the shell, this is your cpp.shell. I put the same program here and this is available. So you don't really have to have an entire C++ framework to actually try this on your system right now. You can just, uh, for, for the simpler programs, you can just use this. So if I click here, run, it actually runs the program. This is the output that you see. So you have the size of the character, which is printed add is, because it's present within double quotation marks. And then you really separate using these b d uh, less two less than signs, anything that you want to put here. So this is a function size of character. So it takes in this data type character and it really tells you how many bytes uh, are being consumed by the memory to store these data types. And you can see for double it's eight, for float and integer it's four, and for character is one. My recommendation is whenever you see or attend a particular lecture, you actually should go and test these functions and programs yourself. They actually will help you build your C++ um, learning skills because programming something is not what you learn by listening or reading a book, you actually have to do it. So my thorough recommendation is, after the end of every lecture, please go back, run the functions that you've seen, and then test them yourself. Well, until next time, uh, see you in the next lecture, where we'll talk about structures. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.